welcome to Mondays with Mira when I get to show you what I consider a really fabulous picture book and we do first seduction then deconstruction where we look at it we read it and we're seduced by how wonderful the, the language is and how fabulous the art is and then we go back and we talk about what makes this picture book work why it's so luscious, why it's so fabulous, why it's so lyrical. So this one is what I consider a, a pretty much a perfect book because both the art and the text, I think most of the books that I'll be showing you will be. Oh, and by the way, if you've seen me before and I'm wearing the same outfit, you can guess why. <laughs> I tried making a bunch of these at the same time so that I wouldn't go crazy every week. So anyway, welcome to Mondays with Mira. I am Dr. Mira Reisberg, uh, children's book author, illustrator, consultant, editor, artist, you name it. Anything creative, I do it. So here we go, half title. Full title. And you can see we've got um, all the little bits of information that a publisher needs to include right here. And then actually it's not a full title because it starts on this page. First voice. It was time to take Victoria, our pedigree Labrador, and Charles, our son, for a walk. So I don't need my glasses because it's a nice big type, which is also really good for kids. When we arrived at the park, I let Victoria off her leash. Immediately, some scruffy mongrel appeared and started bothering her. I shoot it off, but the horrible thing chased her all over the park. I ordered it to go away. But it took no notice of me whatsoever. Sit, I said to Charles. Here. I was just planning what we should have to eat that evening when I saw Charles had disappeared. Oh dear, where had he gone? You get some frightful types in the park these days. I called his name for what seemed like ages. Then I saw him talking to a very rough-looking child. Charles, come here. At once, I said. And come here, please, Victoria. We walked home in silence. Second voice. I needed to get out of the house, so me and Smudge took the dog to the park. He loves it there. I wish I had half the energy he's got. I settled on a bench and looked through the paper for a job. I know it's a waste of time, but you've got to have some hope, don't you? Oops. You've got to have some hope, haven't you? Then it was time to go. Smudge cheered me up. She chatted happily to me all the way home. Third voice. I was at home on my own again. It's so boring. Then my mother said that it was time for our walk. Oops. Do you want to, do you want to come on the slide? A voice asked. It was a girl, unfortunately, but I went anyway. She was great on the slides. She really went fast. I was amazed. Two dogs raced around like old friends. The girl took off her coat and swung on the different bars, so I did the same. I'm good at climbing trees, so I showed her how to do it. She told me her name was Smudge, a funny name I know, but she's nice. Then my mother caught us talking together and I had to go home. Fourth voice. Dad had been really fed up, so I was happy when he said we could take Albert to the park. 
Albot's always in such a hurry to be let off his leash. He went straight up to this nice dog and sniffed its backside. He always does that. Of course the other dog didn't mind, but the owner was really angry, the silly twit. I got talking to this boy. I thought he was kind of a wimp at first, but he's okay. We played on the seesaw and he didn't say much, but later on he was more friendly. We both burst out laughing when we saw Albert taking a swim. Then we all played on the bandstand and I felt really, really happy. Charlie picked a flower and gave it to me. Then his mom called him and he had to go. He looked sad. When I got home, I put the flower in some water and made Dad a nice cup of cocoa. So this is a really extraordinary book. It's what you call a concept book because there's no initial problem, there's no real plot. But what it does is it teaches a tremendous about, amount about point of view and perspective and how one scene can happen and it be totally different according to whoever is, is perceiving it, whoever's there. And it's structured like kind of, um, there's a Kurosawa movie called Rashomon where a scene happens and then it's retold and retold from each perspective. So I imagine that Anthony Brown, who's fabulous, has seen that movie. Um, but he's just generally brilliant anyway. So here, of what I want you to pay attention, the language is terrific and it's very distinctive for each voice. You notice the slang. This was originally British and it's been here. It's been reprinted for Americans. Hence the mom instead of mom. I think they should have just kept it at mom, but there you are. Um, but you can tell the different fonts that he used. So he probably designed it himself as well. And so each font, this is a very proper kind of font for the mother who's pretty stuck up and snobby. And the book is also about class, you know, just the different, here's this woman and she lives in this absolute mansion with her son and dog, no mention of anyone else. And then we've got this other character um, who we don't really see where he lives, but we see where he's, his neighborhood. And there's definitely no mansions there and he's looking for a job and just how hard it is. So it's really, it's a very deep book on so many different levels and addresses sexism in that Smudge is such a strong character. There's so much to love, you know, and then on the back here it's, I called his name, I settled on a bench. I was amazed. I felt really, really happy. And so just here where we've got um, Charles, and you know, we've got this really delicate font. It's really fine and fragile, just like Charles is. And then Smudge and her dad have, you know, dad's font is very bold and very no nonsense. And Smudge's is also bold. But it's much more playful. And that's really interesting. The illustrations are extraordinary. They're watercolour and he's quite the master. And he's embedded all these like art history references in there and all these... Uh... <laughs> they make me laugh just looking at them. Um, here, so we see some Magritte the influence of Magritte in this particular illustration and actually Magritte shows up quite a bit in this book. Um, and let's see here how the light is actually a, uh, a flower. And here we've got, you know, the Mona Lisa dancing with some other historic painterly character. And then the very last Spread, not the very last spread, the very last page. 
we see the cup here. It's got a scene of the two dogs chasing, chasing each other on the cup with the flower in the cup. Here, if you look at the headline of the newspaper, the image is of Edvard Munch's scream. So there's just lots of, whoops, there's just lots of great details in the art for the parents. And it's wonderful when you can do things that amuse both parents and the children. So just, just an absolutely delightful book. You know, and clever. Victoria was having a great time. I wish I was. You know, just very clever, very beautiful, very poetic, and just a really choice picture book. So that's it for me, Dr. Mira, on Mondays with Mira. Thank you.